mathematicians use cubed to denote three-dimensionality. Three things exerting forces on each other opens up way more possibilities than two-dimensionality. Increasingly, in sponsorship, we're seeing this to the third power effect, combining resources of the sponsor, the property, and the fan, and their passion, to create entirely new assets. This morning, what I want to talk about are the new intents, the new technologies, and the new applications that we are seeing, and what it means for our business and for everyone in this room whether you're representing a sponsor, a rights holder, or an agency. I'm going to start with intents. And just staying with this cubed theme, I want to talk about three new intents. The first is the move from prevalence to relevance. In the five-year, $25 million deal between Intel and FC Barcelona epitomizes this, sh this shift from prevalence to re relevance. So process this. The Intel logo is on the inside of the jerseys of the Spanish soccer team. So Intel is visible only when players pull the shirts over their heads, which they've been known to do when celebrating a goal. While Intel ID is only visible during these occasional pop-up moments, the ownership of this symbolic space removes the wallpaper effect of title sponsorships, keeping the brand association fresher for much longer than if Intel's name was visible 24-7. Intel is working with the club to improve the fan experience through new technology, and they're launching an ambitious slate of educational initiatives around the partnership. But what elevates this from being merely clever branding with a cause and supplier overlay and into the realm of cubed is that the partnership is at the forefront of the Internet of Things, a new age in which the data generated by players' shirts, players' shoes, shorts, boots, the seats that the fans are sitting on, the turnstiles that the fans are passing through, all of these things are linked through this Internet of Things, capturing understanding and responding to this flood of data is key to enabling the, the club to personalize their offers to their members and to make better use of the players, to run the stadium with a smaller carbon footprint, to allow stakeholders to engage and interact with players and games in a more meaningful fashion, to simultaneously fulfill a whole range of desires. The takeaway from this first intent, marry the passion and heat of sports, arts, entertainment, causes, fashion, design, and attractions with the insights of big data, combined smart and heart, and sponsorship delivers infinite new opportunities for innovation and connecting with audiences through the things that they love on an immeasurable scale in ways that they never even knew possible. Second new intent, from marketing to solutions. Defining characteristic of CUBE partnerships is they don't just talk about some issue, they actually are starting to solve issues. The two biggest trends impacting business today are social media and social responsibility, or what we at IEG call social opportunity. They are often treated as separately, but I think that they are inextricably linked. Social media gives people, obviously, the power to support the companies and brands that they love and to boycott those that they don't. A strong social business idea becomes a rallying cry for the entire community, employees, stakeholders, suppliers, to rally around a brand or a company. Successful businesses do do well by doing good, but beyond doing good, not just fundraising for three months for a cause, it's gone past these kind of conversations to actual action. Take Johnson & Johnson. They have something called the Campaign for Nursing's Future. It was designed to address 
the critical shortage of nurses in the USA. Johnson & Johnson partners with the American Association of Colleges of Nursing and the National Student Nurses Association to support nurses and nurse education. The multi-year $50 million initiative is designed to enhance the image of the profession, bring minorities into the profession, and recruit young people to choose it as a profession, as well as to have a higher retention rate of nurses currently practicing. In res the results have been pretty amazing. Um, there's been over $19 million raised for nursing scholarships. Johnson & Johnson has added another $26 million in support of minority nurses programs. Enrollment overall in nursing programs has doubled. The number of young nurses has increased 70%. Male graduates from nursing programs has gone from 5.8% in 2004 to 15% today. Johnson & Johnson, awareness for Johnson & Johnson of the partnership among nurses and doctors unaided is 83%. And in terms of its impact on the Johnson & Johnson brand, positive impact, 100%. And as we'll hear from Marks & Spencer's Adam Elman during the conference, good intent is a core strategy for profit. So linking an organization's reason for being to improving lives and impacting society definitely amplifies ROI, and it is no longer strictly limited to brands or corporations. People want the values of the products and services and teams and festivals and musicians that they support to align with their own values. So take the French national soccer team or football team for those of you from Europe. In France, um, a recent survey found that 82% of the French public had a negative opinion of the national team. Niche sports, on the other hand, like rugby, are gaining in terms of favor and popularity. In response, the French Football League created a program that connects unemployed fans to the companies that sponsor soccer in France. There's a solution. Um, we're gonna hear at lunch tomorrow from somebody from Ogilvy and Mather who work with Club Recife in Brazil to create an amazing solution that marries the lifelong passion of fans of that club to the critical need for organ donations in Brazil with incredible results. Solutions, not marketing. The takeaway from all of this, the focus has really shifted from creating three-month campaigns and you know, drive-by messages to creating platforms and systems that create better lives and better futures. Because in our always-on, hyper-transparent, instant-everything, wow-we-now world, partnerships with the highest ROI create shared value and enrich entire ecosystems. Third and last new intent I want to talk about is the shift from interruption to invention. Today's highest performing companies are not just innovative, they're actually inventive. They're committed to creating first by taking invention beyond product development and carrying this mindset throughout their entire organization. Procter & Gamble's marketing inventions actually have a higher ROI than product inventions, according to their CMO. Coca-Cola, who we'll be hearing from later today, is inventing entirely new models for partnering with the music ecosystem. And its partnership with Will I Am, which reimagines the role of celebrity and brands working together, has resulted in a new product line, EcoCycle, built on the premise of sustainability. Businesses are realizing that inventions deliver a higher ROI because having first delivers the kind of impact necessary to create a competitive advantage. High impact moments that are compelling and captivating. Shifting the paradigm from return on in investment to return on invention. Rights holders who are dedicating the space and resources within their organizations 
for inventive creativity and rapid prototyping, who we'll be hearing from over the next few days include the Brooklyn Nets, Maker Fair, FC Barcelona, Richard Childress Racing, Shakespeare Theatre Company, the American Heart Association, and the Chicago Cubs. The takeaway here is that investments in new platforms can take lots of different forms, but those with the highest value create something new and build engagement, touch points, and revenue. Next, new technologies. Whether you're looking to attract sponsors or to engage audiences through sponsorship, digital and big data are reinventing the business. Sponsors and rights holders can leverage pervasive wireless, mobile apps, wearable technology, laser projection, NFC, RFID, virtual reality, projection mapping, audio fingerprint triggers, and other new technologies to not just enhance experiences, but to actually transform them. Coca-Cola is using Apple's iBeacons, an indoor positioning system that works like Bluetooth to pinpoint a person's location as part of their 2014 FIFA World Cup activation. And we'll be seeing a bunch of other new technologies from Coke around World Cup, including its use of mobile marketing platform Weave. SAP is using big data and technology to improve the relationship between sports fans and teams and leagues. From cloud and mobile solutions to applications that measure fan sentiment, sponsors, agencies, and rights holders are now deploying big data to generate new revenue and create new businesses. They are monetizing the data they're collecting by selling information to um, networks to inform their broadcast talent, to um, selling information to other sponsors around fan behavior. For example, IBM, which has been a longtime sponsor of Grand Slam Tennis, has unveiled using 40 million data points collected over the last eight years, um, their Slam Tracker. This online dashboard takes reams of new data, uses the old data that they have, and motion capture cameras and automated sensors to de deliver predictive analysis that has the fan experience much better. Verizon was able to tell the NBA's Phoenix Suns if fans went to a particular quick service restaurant after the game, thus testing the effectiveness of a sponsorship. Yahoo is the exclusive online sports content, social networking, photo, and video sharing partner of the new stadium being built in San Francisco by the 49ers. And using the power of analytics again, music dealers identified an artist called Metis for Coke Zero um, for a campaign in 2012. The song that they used took off in Central America, then in Europe, and by the end of 2013, it, it was released as a commercial single. This ability to identify rising talent with higher levels of creativity and certainty enables sponsors to take bigger risks on lesser known entities and benefits all of us. Today, sponsors and rights holders, however, need to think and behave more like software developers than advertisers. Gartner says that by 2017, the CMO, the chief marketing officer, will spend more on IT than the CIO spends on IT. And as we experience more of our world through technology, there will be a parallel demand for intense, real-time experiences. As all in life is accelerating, we want to be moved emotionally. And in a social sharing world, offline definitely feeds online. Take Vodafone. They sponsored London's local New Year's Eve fireworks celebration this year. And they worked with food scientists and a host of special effects producers to take new technology and transform the fireworks experience so that it became sensory with smells, not just sights. 
um, and feelings and smartphone camera technology to bring it all to a real-time app that they created. Finally, here's how a museum, the Rijksmuseum, is using new technology to transform their user experiences as well as involve their sponsors and monetize um, this new technology. So what they did was create something called Reich's Studio, an online presentation of 125,000 works in the museum's collection. They invite the public to create their own masterpieces. You can download images of any of the artworks in a creative way um, and apply them to whatever you want. You could create a set of china, you could create a tattoo, um, they're ultra high resolution works, they're freely downloaded, and um, you can make posters of them, whatever you want. But the museum created this special cropping tool that lets you select just whatever part of the image you want. Once you've created your masterpiece, orders for the special products are processed by a Dutch startup company called Pichu, which has installed an API on the site linking to various print-on-demand companies. In the first three months, over 32,000 portfolios were created, more than 112,000 artworks were downloaded, and 28,000 prototypes were made. Takeaway for new technologies. We're in an era of data mining, excavating, crunching, wowing, modeling, measuring, predicting, visualizing, automating, tracking, sensing, all that stuff. And big data is definitely coming in to um, play a critical decision-making role at every point in the process. But big data needs big love, smart and heart. And because algorithms are never going to read and respond to humans the way humans do, we're always going to need that side of the business as well. So as much as brands will be able to tell tons of things about their customers and hone in with amazing accuracy going forward, they're still going to need to tie into the things that their audience loves in order to get them to love their brands. Finally, three new applications. And I want to talk about this in terms of threes again, keeping on with this three theme of threes, in terms of three buckets for monetizing content, channels, and communities. So first is content. You know, in the past it was about um, prioritizing exposure. And um, in the last few years, thanks to social media, what we've really seen is that the number one most important asset that comes from a partnership really today is content. In fact, I'd argue that content marketing is really the new social media marketing, but that could be another discussion. Um, one example, Taco Bell and the NBA recently expanded their partnership in a deal that includes digital and social program showcasing game-winning shots. Among other things, fans will be able to view clips of buzzer beaters at a Taco Bell branded section on NBA.com. Or Mountain Dew, when they launch a new flavor, they now start with the live event, turn that event into online content, and then use the event footage as their TV advertising. So the event complements the TV, which complements the online participation, which complements the product or service itself. This what, so what, now what structure is a virtuous cycle. It can't end just with the one-to-one -one interaction. It's now critical to push the creative execution around the notion of no dead ends, making sure that all of the executions follow up and make sense together one after the other. And we'll be hearing from Red Bull, and no one is better at content utilization, content creation, content distribution than Red Bull. Red Bull knows it's not enough just to badge content. You need to also create it. Because in sponsorship, it's credit, not just awareness, that matters. Brands do not get credit for being the biggest sponsor or the brand with the longest tenure, but rather for bringing something new, inventive, 
and better to the fan experience. Awareness is not a proxy for success in sponsorship. To change behavior, sponsors need credit for creating new assets, enhancing fan experiences, and making things happen. Peter Tortorici from Group M Entertainment is doing a session here on how to monetize the content that you have and turn it into something that can now be streamed through all these new channels and used. Um, the takeaway on this first, this first piece content is that you can't just piggyback on what exists, but you have to use your partnership as a springboard to all kinds of valued enhancements, experiences, and access. The second application is channels. Just as there's been a democratization of content creation, there's also been a democratization of distribution channels for that content. So for our industry, that's really good news because you do not need to put you know, the fate of your partnership in the hands of being able to sell TV broadcast rights. There's just so many other alternatives. Um, take game portals. Sony's PlayStation or Xbox Live. In fact, Bonnaroo for 2014 did a partnership with Xbox Live where they just announced their 2014 lineup through Xbox Live. And Xbox Live is going to be their um, provider of live streaming during the festival. So you've got game portals and consoles. Another channel direct internet delivery, you know, YouTube, Ustream, Crackle, Hulu, et cetera. And unlike cable, where it's kind of expensive to start a network, um, just ask Oprah, the cost of starting a digital network is tiny. So the door is really open to anyone who can create or curate an interesting programming service. Rights holders also deliver viable channels for this content distribution. Major League Baseball Advanced Media will begin powering what Sony is calling its cloud-based TV serv service. And WWE World Wrestling has a new 24-7 um, on-demand channel also powered by Major League Baseball Advanced Media. Both um, Sony service and WWE's feature live and on-demand content, creating really an alternative to cable. One of our speakers at lunch tomorrow, Hugh Evans, went out to sell um, broadcast rights to his Global Citizen Festival, and the buyer, interestingly enough, was Major League Baseball Advanced Media. So they were buying rights to distribute this festival. And then sponsors themselves are a whole other distribution channel that did not exist just a few years ago. Again, Coca-Cola, since ramping up its music investments, um, is no longer doing just old-fangled tour sponsorships, but instead investing in that entire ecosystem with um, plays like 10% uh, stake in distribution channel Spotify. iTunes Radio debuted with four Pepsi-titled music stations. An Android TV channel streamed exclusive interviews and entertainment news from Sundance Film Festival last month. So the takeaway, as media has melded, TV, mobile, social, and internet are now all one. Winning in sponsorship requires building and integrating buying momentum across multi-channel living. The opportunity to optimize content on a daily, ongoing basis. Third application is communities or audiences and the opportunity to monetize that. So what matters now is how well connected a rights holder is to their audience and how well they can connect their audience to each other and to the sponsors. Plus, how well they manage their customer relationship marketing and that whole side of their business. For example, Arsenal Football Club's ability to build more detailed profiles of their customers in their revamped CRM system played a key role in Emirates' decision to become a 150 million pound sponsor of the club. And sponsors now are also monetizing the audiences that they've captured through their partnerships. So O2, 
who started something called O2 Priority around their sponsorship of the O2 Arena in London. Um, O2 is a, a phone service. I talked about it a couple of years ago, the program, and at the time they had two million um, people that were signed up for priority. And basically what it does is it gives them early access to tickets at the O2 Arena before they go on sale to the general public. Well, now a few years later, they have 23 million members, so 23 million people that hear from O2 on an ongoing basis, not about service disruptions, not about their phone bills, but about the shared passion of music and the fact that they can get early access to these concerts. Um, those 23 million people are now an asset that O2 is marketing to other companies. So a few months ago, they signed a partnership with Nike to start um, O2 Priority Sports. And Nike is powering that with all kinds of access to these 23 million um, members, things like training runs with famous athletes and um, first dibs to new introductions of Nike products and discounts. So the takeaway here is that CRM is transforming relationships and the value of audiences um, is that there's a growing business, not just in accumulating friends and followers, but in rewarding, segmenting, and understanding them at a level of intimacy that we have never seen before. So this combination of content, channels, and community, plus the other things I talked about with technologies, is turning out to be a formula for a final C that I want to talk about today. And that is capital. Thanks, Kelly. The growth of distribution channels has really, really powered the value of content. And agencies and sponsors want to, to capture this content in so many different ways, especially the kind that people love. And again, sports and entertainment and fashion and design. And what we are seeing um, just in the last nine months, or maybe 12 months since we met, um, is just an explosion in acquisitions of sponsorship agencies, in sponsorship value of rights holders. Let me just give you a few examples. In 2013, Manchester United's growth was driven not by the traditional broadcast revenue increases, but by record commercial revenue or sponsorship. Um, a decade after the dot-com boom years created an influx of corporate sponsorship, those were nice times for any of you that were here in those days. Um, it was really fun and really easy. Um, but festivals now, this year, are seeing a comeback that more than, that matches and exceeds what we saw then. The Tribune Events Group, who's here somewhere in the audience, um, their events group out of Chicago is a double-digit profit center for Tribune and is now being rolled out into all eight markets. In December 2013, William Morris Endeavor paid $2.4 billion for IMG. Again, the reflect, it reflects the melding of sports and entertainment and William Morris's primary rival, CAA, Creative Artists, um, also made an acquisition recently of Inside Sports and Entertainment. Um, those, both those acquisitions were funded by Venture Capital. Chime Communications out of London um, bought JMI, Motorsports Agency, for $70.6 million recently. That's an amazing multiple. I mean, JMI's reported profit was 4.7 million. So an acquisition of over 70 million on that is nice. Um, since we met last year, Relativity Media has moved into fashion and sponsorship consulting, making a slew of investments. Madison Square Garden and um, music industry heavyweight Irving Azoff have just partnered on a new company offering artist management and TV production and live event branding. And just as he did in the 1990s with the roll-up of regional concert producers across the country, um, which he then sold to Clear Channel in 2005 and was spun off with Ticketmaster and is now Live Nation, Robert Sillerman's SFX um, Entertainment went public 
earlier, no, at the end of last year, and has since then been on a binge of buying up dance music festivals worldwide. They've bought Voodoo Experience, Tomorrowland, Mysteryland. Um, they took a 45% stake in Rock in Rio. So um, it's happening at all levels, sponsorship agencies, festivals, sports, entertainment. Um, Jay-Z's in on the action. He started his sports marketing agency, um, Rock Nation Sports, and recently acquired um, Kanye West's uh, design firm to, to make that even stronger. And it's also helping, happening with smaller event venues and entertainment. Um, my friend Peter Shapiro, who started something called Brooklyn Bowl, which is a bowling alley with music stages um, and food in Brooklyn, now um, is expanding to London and Las Vegas, and his partners in those ventures are uh, Madison Square Garden and AEG. And then a company called Event Live that formed in 2012 that was interesting. I was watching their growth because they were trying to stream live music from festivals to create a big audience for that. Less than 12 months after starting, they've already been acquired by Yahoo, and they went away. They've now been folded into Yahoo Stream and Yahoo Music because Yahoo's decided that their future rests in two areas, sports and music streaming. So the takeaway, again, is thanks to the new technology, um, the experience of attending an event can be perpetuated and made better by connecting people, not just when they're consuming the entertainment, but when they're away from it, and hundreds and thousands of new businesses are starting around that. Um, but again, you know, big data still needs big love, smart and heart is still, still critical. And um, sponsorship, which offers a substantial and sustainable opportunity to connect audiences to the things that they love on an immeasurable scale, that future has never been better or stronger. Cubed can move businesses forward with this new narrative, one that puts solutions rather than badging at the heart of the brand proposition. One that shifts the focus from interruption to invention and from expense to monetization. And those of you in this room who make lives more entertaining, more meaningful, and more successful are disproportionately rewarded. So we're living in a time of unprecedented opportunities for you to use your talent for broader and better effect. Embrace it, go for it, and have a great three days. Thank you.